Welcome to our Eco Plus program. In our last episode, we learned how Kampala Capital City Authority is managing waste around the city. Today, we are going to Nakasero Market in Central Division to see how Kampala Capital City Authority, through collaboration with Marura Protein Uganda Limited, is managing organic waste. For us here, we deal in separating just only organic materials from this waste and we take them to the company. Yeah. So that's your sorting, you do kind of sorting? I'm just sorting. After sorting, then we, could, we load them on their car, then we take them to the company. How do you find the exercise of sorting the organic from the non organic? Because I'm seeing these all types. You find umbrella, plastic, cloth, and. Yeah, that is the most dangerous thing we are finding here because we are finding people, they do mix the organic and non-organic. That's why we are here to sort them, so that we take only the organic ones. Those people, if they can help us and they, get, they do separate, so that we find, we find the organic material already on their own, in, in, their, in, the, in the separate places. That one, I think, it can be very easy. Even you cannot even waste a lot of time being here collecting. The condition here is very terrible because the cars are passing. If you are not even serious, even the cars, they can knock you because the space is very small. And even you are seeing here, we are loading. Even the KCCA car is, is, it is about to come, it's also going to come to load. It takes and also we take. Like, like in a day, how many trucks do you take to the We usually take one. Okay. Yeah. From only this market or other markets? We collect from three markets. From here, after here we go to Usafi and even the central market in Nakawa. Okay. Yeah. Marura Protein Uganda Limited has ventured in breeding black soldier flies with the aim of providing fertilizers to farmers and promoting environmental conservation. Atinama Ave branch is where black soda flies are bred. To begin with, QP is brought from the Bugolobi site and uh, on reaching here, we have to house it into our love cages that are within the greenhouse. Uh, within the love cages, uh, we do expect the pupae to turn into the flies, that is the flies a clo a closing or emerging uh, from the pupae. Uh, when the flies emerge, of course, they will uh, populate the, green, the, the love cage, as we, we can all see. And we expect the male black soldier flies and the female black soldier flies to engage uh, thereby uh, fertilization taking place and and of course giving us our ultimate goal which is the fertilized egg. After a life cycle of around seven days uh, the flies do die off uh, then we have to empty the cage removing the dead flies and the pupa casings those are the casings from which the flies had emerged. Uh, when, when, when the pupa casings and the dead flies are removed, uh, we now uh, prepare uh, the, the love cage for, for what? For feeling. Feeling that means we are putting another batch of pupae. So this actually happens on a daily basis whereby we do input fresh pupae into the love cages and of course, after a, a given period of seven, seven, seven to 14 days, we do empty them. Uh, talking about what a love cage is, uh, a love cage is simply a, an, an, a net structure that is housing a, a given cohort of same aged flies. That, that means the same, same batch of flies, uh, not until uh, their, their, their lifespan is due. The love cage is having different components that include uh, the eggies, 
uh, which are the egg laying media. Some people do refer to them as the egg traps. And these are actually the, the eggies. Uh, these, 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 these are the traps where we do expect our eggs, our flies to do lay their eggs. Uh, and of course, uh, we do pick them out on a daily basis to make sure that the eggs are collected and of course taken into the incubator where they do get the enhanced environment for hatching. Uh, we do have the attractant containers and dishes uh, where we do expect uh, to put our eggs such that our flies are attracted uh, to come and lay into our egg laying medias. However, they are attracted by the attractant substrate contained in the attractant dish. We do have a cotton, a cotton or water source uh, that consists of a uh, cotton wool uh, placed on a cardboard uh, because of actually its high absorbent characteristics. Uh, it enables the flies to have water and leap down. Yeah, so it is our our role to make sure that this water source is actually having water in good amounts such that our flies can, can do what? Can get access to water the whole day. Uh, we also have uh, the attractant cloth, uh, which is uh, uh, a yellow cloth or an attractive colored cloth uh, that enhances breed that enhances breeding or mating. Uh, that means it is attracting the male fly and the female fly, uh, of course, to engage. And thereby, we increase chances of having a fertilized egg within our what? Within our eggies. Those are the egg traps. The conditioning is all done automatically within the greenhouse, uh, whereby uh, the shedding net uh, opens and closes depending on what parameter, parameters have been set. Of course, those are the parameters that suit our maximum production of our black soldier flies. Uh, however, the shedding net is to provide the shed. Uh, then we have the side rolling windows that still open and close automatically uh, to ensure ventilation within our greenhouse. We do have the the light, uh, the light or the lamps that do emit, of course, heat. They are modified to to give us the light and also emit some heat uh, to make sure that uh, the temperatures within the house are those that are optimum for production. From Namave, Baby Lavi are taken to the Kampala Capital City Authority Waste Recycling Center in Iwankoko, where they are fed on organic waste. Simon Kasubi, Assistant Production Manager, takes us through the process at Iwankoko. Here at Mala Protein, we do deal with organic waste. And currently, this is our organic waste that we receive from Ovolio. So here is trying to feed the shredder, which cuts it in two pieces for it to become finer in order that we can store it in our drums for fermentation of four days and above. Yes. Then after shredding it, as it's doing, feeding the machine, it's shredding. So after shredding, we shall get that drum, store it, and it has to be airtight to cut out oxygen. So when oxygen is not on, it ferments further. So in that process, we take four, four days and above for it to ferment. 
So we put it in this drum, we seal them, make them airtight, and take them to the storage. So as it's feeding, it crushes the waste into smaller, smaller particles, other finer particles that can be fed on by the young larvae or the baby larvae, which are five days old. So in this process, after the machine has chopped it into pieces, we do seal our drum. And the drum has to be airtight for it to ferment. The more it ferments, the more softer it becomes, which helps the other baby larvae to feed on it easier. Yes. From here, we have to take, we take our drum of that waste, the storage where we put it to ferment. So this drum will be here for four days and above. It depends on our storage containers we do have. So when it's here for four days and above, I'll take it back to this side. We do have a, a mixer. When we put it on, it mixes this feed till it gets out in this format. And this process is called the inoculation process. Here I'm going to prepare the feed for putting in our baby larvae or the young maggots. So in each crate of this size, I put in 12.5 kilograms of the feed like this. So here I'm doing what we call the inoculation. So this feed, I take it to the warehouse. After putting in this feed, which is 12.5, I will have to take it to the warehouse where we do put it on the pallets. So here, these are our baby larvae that I'm going to put in this feed. They are five days old. So I'm going to put in my 30 grams. In the feed I've got in from the other mixer, the mixing area. So here I'm introducing the baby larvae, which is called the inoculation process. So when I put in these 30 grams here, they will feed, then I'll have to put it on the pallet, that side up. And it will, be fed, it will feed on that mixed food for seven days. So the 30 grams that I've put, I've put on a crate will turn to 1.5 kilogram in seven days. Joseph Ruswabi, Chief Production Officer, Maura Protein Uganda Limited, explains what persuaded them to start up. There are basically actually four problems that ignited us. The, a lot of waste as is being produced, whereby today we are actually at KCCA and uh, there was nothing like sustainable to manage this organic waste. Two, the high unorganic fertilizer being used and the lack of you know, viable organic fertilizers that farmers would probably use easily. So that wasn't there. And then the low quality feeds, especially the protein sources. Initially farmers were using fish meal, of which you could find that a lot has actually sand. So that wouldn't actually guarantee the production vis-a-vis -vis the investment but then we are now trying to train farmers how best they can produce their own feed as well. The high youth unemployment. So all these problems ignited and inspired protein to actually offset. Now, you see this book? A Practical Guide How to Raise the Black Soldier Fly Larvae. This is our first edition training farmers the step-by-step -step process. It just came out on Saturday, just that is recent showing you what are the necessary steps that one can actually go through to actually produce their own feed and how massive is that. So we are going to always keep producing these books to educate the farmers that it's very, very possible to lower our cost of production if we can actually raise the black soldier fly larvae. If a farmer was actually to do this entire chain, it becomes very complex and a little bit very expensive. However, as I told you before, a farmer doesn't need to worry about the breeding side. Using 20,000, a farmer can buy a kilogram of baby larvae. I'm going to show you a kilogram of baby larvae. The baby larvae will take seven days 
and they can actually attain a maximum of, of about 40 kilograms of lava. Seven days. Can you imagine? They're obtaining 40 kilograms of lavi. They're using about 20, 50, 250 kilograms of organic waste. So they're obtaining the lavi as well. They're obtaining the organic fertilizer. So this becomes very simple for them. All they need to do, get the baby lavi, 20,000, get a kilogram of, lavi, of baby lavi, feed to your waste, live. Seven days, harvest. What are the challenges faced in the business? Yes, the challenges are very, very, very many because for us to reach this level, it has taken us more than four years. First of all, uh, the entire chain is complex. We didn't have anyone to copy from. We didn't have anyone. Wherever the internet was, you try to see, but then it is, some, it is doing something else. So it has taken us a lot of capital to find out, a lot of investment to figure out actually where does the business, how does the farmer benefit. That is why we've actually come up with this book. It is knowledge that we've obtained over a period of more than four years. It is actually money that we've got here. But then here we are sharing it at an affordable cost so that someone can actually easily learn and uh, enrich themselves on how best to produce. For someone who is interested to work the same journey as we, we've taken, oh, we don't have any problem with that. However, we actually discovered that it's better if a farmer just concentrated on something, especially like the seven day cycle, it would be very much easier compared to the entire complex chain. With increasing climate change and environmental degradation, protein formula is the best way to go in conserving our environment by venturing in opportunities in wastes.